my name is Debbie Gallegos Cordova and my husband Michael John Gallegos was hit and killed by a drunk driver on June 23rd of 2012 and we are here to tell our story. A young kid, Blake, who was, was 23 at the time, was driving a Chevy Blazer. My husband was in a little Hyundai Scoop. The police estimated he was going anywhere from 95 to 98 miles an hour and hit my husband. My name is Blake Mulder. I'm an inmate at Central Utah Correctional Facility here on automobile homicide with negligent DUI. I was 23 years old when I drove intoxicated and killed a man and I'm serving up to one to 15 years in prison. I had drifted off and passed out of the wheel and rear-ended somebody. And as I woke up, I, like I mentioned, I, I heard the most terrifying, just, you can't even explain it really, the, the most awful sound. And I had, at that instant, I knew that I had done something terrible. About 8.30 in the morning, Mike's boss called me and asked me if everything was okay. And he informed me that he received unconfirmed reports that Michael had been in a car accident and it was severe. And I was in complete shock, you know, my, my mind was racing. I didn't even know what to think really. As I climbed out of the window, my first thought was, please God, don't let anyone be in that car. I was very intoxicated. The police, they made me walk the line, they gave me a breathalyzer test, they uh, took my blood this blood sample, and um, then they, they did tell me that someone was in the car. They had a hard time even, um, even recognizing what kind of a car it was. I was angry. I was angry at Blake for doing this to us, but I realized that I could not, for myself and for my kids, I could not hold on to that anger. I had to find a way to forgive him and let it go. It shouldn't have happened in the first place. This, this is, this all could have been prevented with, with better decision making. Learn from me, learn from somebody who's, who's, who's had a good life and, and was doing the right things but made some, a bad decision. Like I said, just knowing that you killed somebody is probably the, it is the worst thing. I don't know what, what makes anything worse than taking someone's life. You know, waking up every morning is a reminder of what happened. Every day, I remember what I did. The worst night of my life. My kids, when I, when it came time to tell them, um, my son with autism, he really didn't understand. He really didn't care, it seemed like. My daughter, she had a hard time. When I first told him later that afternoon, it was almost like it wasn't real. She didn't want to accept it. But later that evening, when it was time to bring them in to get ready for bed, she kind of walked around and she looked like she was trying to find her dad and realizing that he wasn't here. She got sad and started crying and said, is my dad coming home? And I said, no, he's not. You know, if I would have listened to my dad, every night before I went out, he would text me and say, don't drink and drive. It affects more than just yourself. It affects the family, the community, the neighborhood of where that person lived. It affects so many more. If there's one thing that you can learn from this experience, please don't drive impaired. <laughs>